Hello, everyone. Welcome to this stream. Uh, how's everyone doing? Thank you for joining in. In the video today, we are going to go through the um, screen recorded recordings that I made for the Banton Frameworks Bespoke Glasses project. And there is roughly about an hour of footage to go through. Um, there was about an hour and 20 minutes of, rec of uh, recorded footage, so I have um, sped that up slightly so we can fit it all in an hour. It is not the entire uh, work that I did for Bantam Frameworks. It's not everything that I did, but it captures, uh, it captures each process. It captures each part of the process. Uh, whatever you see in this video, I think there was maybe three or four times more work after that that went into each step. So after I stopped the recording, um, I carried on working on it, but I wasn't recording things. So everything that you see in this video is like the first of each step. And um, I didn't record the rest because it would have just been the same thing over and over again, but just refining the design. And it would have just been the same thing over and over again. So this is the first part of each step. I'm going to play the video and I'm going to hang out here um, to chat as well. And uh, in the chat, I can see everyone's questions. I can see people joining in. How you doing? How's it going? Uh, Jonathan, you got some Bantam frames already. So uh, that's great to, to know that they're excellent. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing my pair when they arrive. So because I'm not used to YouTube Live, I'm going to try and do something now to try and play full screen video that you can see here. And if I go full screen on this, uh, on this one, enter full screen. So can you still see my mouse moving around? What I don't want to have happened is um, because I've gone into a new full screen area, I don't want the recorder to have got confused and stop um, recording, but I think that's working. Yes, I think that's working. Okay. So we're just gonna play the video uh, and just let it run through. Move my mouse over so it gets rid of the uh, play button. Uh, so I'm gonna hang out down in this bottom corner uh, I'm going to hang out here for the hour, but in the background, or the, the main part of the video, is going to be my whole process. Now, it's sped up, just move me away a little bit, maybe up here for the time being. It's sped up by maybe 1.5%, I think, um, because there was like an hour and a little bit of footage. So it is ever so slightly sped up. So that's going to help with uh, some of the boring sections that come up a little bit later on. But if you have any questions uh, throughout this video of, of what I'm doing. Um, oh, hey, how you doing? Uh, you're sketching along. Uh, I wish I was sketching right now as well, but uh, I'm giving myself the afternoon off. I'm just watching some old sketches. Uh, but that's cool to know that people are sketching along as well. Are you sketching uh, glasses? I saw your last video on... Um, Everybody check out uh, Burke Kaplan because the, the video, the last video about design sketching was really cool uh, and I found some use in it. So yeah, go go check out that video. But obviously after, after we've all finished out hanging, hanging, uh, hanging out here. Um, so yeah, this first stage of the project, um, because it's bespoke glasses specifically to me, um, bespoke glasses specifically for my face, I thought, why not um, sketch over my own face? Um, so what I did was I, I took a photo of uh, my my own face without glasses on, which trying to operate a camera without glasses on was pretty difficult. Um, my eyesight's not great. So that was pretty interesting to do. And uh, after that, I just imported that into Procreate, the sketching app. And I already had a picture of myself with the augmented reality um, try-on service that Banton Frameworks has on their website. So I already had a vague indication of what their frames would look like on me. So what I did was I traced around an existing pair of their glasses that I was interested in 
um, in the style. And once I had that traced, uh, I could just turn off that layer of their glasses and then trace over uh, my own face uh, to, to think about the, the shapes and stuff that I wanted. Um, so it was a lot of pushing and pulling of, of just different shapes and there was a lot of ideation and form finding uh, in that process in itself. So I think by the end of this, I had maybe uh, five or six, maybe seven different uh, designs that I had exported from Procreate. Uh, but you'll see me pushing and pulling each design in this sketch phase uh, that I just didn't capture because I erased things and then sketched over it. So obviously there was a lot more going on that I didn't have at the end because I'd erased all the changes that I made. Uh, and there's always this this conflict of um, should I erase it and trace over it or should I set that one aside and use that as a, as a design A and carry on working on a design B. Uh, there's always that conflict that I have of, you know, how many when does, a, when does a new design become a new design and not just an update on the old design, you know? Uh, but with this section, there was no right or wrong answers. I, you can see me zoomed quite in. Um, you can see me zoomed in quite far to try and get these uh, lines where I wanted them. And it was really funny because I actually recorded, uh, I screen captured the iPad screen as well. For this stage, I screen captured the iPad screen. And... Um, it was just so, I, I haven't been able to show anyone because my face just, I zoom in so far. No one wants to see that, right? Um, so I just kept it as being this video of the iPad screen. Um, because if I show you the screen recording, then it's just, it's just too much. Uh, I didn't want to put anyone through that. Um, so yeah, we're just watching myself um, record on the screen. And there was people walking around in the background as well, so... I had to say hi to them as they were walking around. I, I'm pretty sure they didn't they were they didn't know what I was doing, sketching over my own face um, with a camera set up. It, it must have been really weird for them to see that. Uh, but yeah, I just carried on working, doing my thing. And um, yeah, let's see if anyone's got any questions over here. Uh, do you guys have any um, thoughts about... Have you all seen the 8-minute video that I did for Banton Framework? So the last video that I posted um, was 8 minutes long and that condensed this whole hour and, and more footage into 8 minutes. And uh, so this video is like the extended cut. Uh, kind of like a director's commentary. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen that video, go after this video, go and check out that video because uh, that was it was really fun to make. The the video that I made for for this, the first part, was the most YouTube style video that I think I've ever made. So it's not like a tutorial. It's not like a you know first open up the program, go and click this button and do this button like a tutorial in that type of sense. It's like an actual documentary style video about how I designed these glasses and uh, I really want to do more of that type in the future they take a little bit longer to do obviously I think I've been working on this project for about two months now or a month or two months so and I like the original conversations that I had with Bantam Frameworks uh, Jamie and Lucy at Bantam Frameworks have gone back even further than that so you know it's a long process to do um, but I think compressing it all in one video has been really fun to try and play with camera angles and music and uh, storytelling of, of how the project is coming together and why I'm designing it in that way and why I want the shape to be like this or, or whatever. So uh, it was a really fun video. So go and check that out later on. And... Um, yeah, we've got some questions popping up here. Uh, why did you sketch out in Procreate first instead of just doing straight in Illustrator? That's a good question. Really good question. Um, Procreate allowed me to um, not worry so much about uh, perfect lines. And in Illustrator, because the line is made by a computer and it's crisp and, you know, there's almost an expectation for it to be more perfect um, because of the medium that it's in. 
if it's a sketch and you can tell that it's more um, freehand and more sketchy, your brain gives you some more leeway in terms of um, how the design is, is looking. So I wanted to just sketch as many things as possible, as fast as possible. I was in this space sketching, I think, for maybe half an hour or 45 minutes or something. And, and I had seven designs in the end. But like I said, I was sketching over designs again and again. So I probably had, you know, seven designs. But if I resketch those designs three or four times, then, you know, that multiplies out. Right. So I had a lot of designs within a short amount of time. And then I use Illustrator to clean the designs up that I wanted. Uh, I probably could have cut out all of this stuff. So I'm really um, worried when I'm recording screens and stuff like that, that it stopped recording the screen in the background. Because normally if you see right where the, uh, where the time and the date usually is on the iPad, that's where you can see the recorded like screen is recording icon. And uh, when you're in Procreate like this, all of that information goes and sometimes it just stops recording. So every now and again, I will just like exit the app, make sure that icon is still there and then carry on again. I probably should have uh, cut that out, but that's, you know, it's all part of the process. Um, so yeah, that's the reason why I started sketching in Procreate just so I could be as free and um, not have to worry about it being perfect. Uh, nice setup, thank you very much. Uh, does Procreate have a symmetry tool? Yeah, it has um, a, quite a good range of uh, sketching guides and guidelines. You can have a uh, normal X or Y symmetry tool and you can uh, move the line around and rotate the line. You can have a rotational symmetry tool up to maybe, I think, eight segments. So if you draw something in one segment, it updates in the others. It has a perspective uh, guide. It has obviously the ellipse and uh, smart shape to get uh, sharp ellipses and sharp lines. Um, so yeah, I'm obviously using the uh, the symmetry tool in this instance. Th there is a lot of like I think I'm at the moment now where I accident I wanted to scale up the glasses ever so slightly or scale down the glasses ever so slightly. And I accidentally moved it off the symmetry line. So this, at the moment, I'm just testing out, have I managed to move it back into symmetry with itself? Uh, so this was really frustrating. I think this probably took up about 10 minutes uh, of my time. Uh, just because I was so, I just moved the glasses without even thinking about the symmetry tool. Uh, glasses seem like a product where you have to stick quite close to the boundaries of, and you can't really go crazy with the design. Did you find that difficult? Uh, it's a good question. Um, and there were some guidelines that I had from Banton Frameworks, mainly um, how thick the uh, frame can be. So it was, I think, 2.3 millimeters is the thinnest the frame can be. Um, Apart from that, I don't think there were many issues with designing and, and staying on target. Um, I wanted these frames to be the glasses that I wear daily when, when I receive them. And I know from living with glasses for the past 25 years, I know the type of styles that I like. I know the type of uh, styles that work well with my prescription. And what I mean by that is for anyone that has quite strong prescription like me, you, every time you go to get a new pair of glasses, you'll be told that the, th the, um, the stronger your prescription combined with the size of the glasses means that the thickness of the lens increases. So if you have a strong prescription and you want really big, uh, bold statement glasses, the um, to to accommodate for that size of frame, the thickness of the lens needs to increase. So if you don't want thicker lenses, uh, if you want like thin as thin lenses as possible, you go for smaller uh, glasses, smaller frames, and that means that they can uh, decrease the size of the uh, lens. 
So that coupled with the fact that um, I've had glasses like this in the past and the fact that I want to wear these daily, um, they're not bold statement pieces. You know, they're not uh, sunglasses that I want to make a statement with or anything like that. I just want to put them on every day and, and go about doing work. Um, that's why all of the frames, when you see the seven different designs at the end, that's why they're all in the same sort of ballpark figure because I was designing these for me and uh, I already knew what I liked as a, as a daily wearer. If I wanted to get more crazy with the designs, uh, I could have and, and Banton Frameworks were more than happy to accommodate that. I had some different designs for the um, temples. So the arm pieces are called temples. And I had some ideas that were going to um, coat these in acetate uh, to have a plastic um, covering on, on the frames. But um, I decided against that and we decided that we could go for the uh, temples that they already use at, at Bantam Frameworks. More people wondering about. <laughs> and um, I could have gone more crazy with that, but I just decided, you know, I want this to be a collaboration with Bantam Frameworks. I want this to be a collaboration with me and them. So there's no issue using their existing uh, frames for me. Uh, I do know that Banton Frameworks are partnering with uh, a fair few creatives out there. I've already seen uh, some of uh, Spencer's videos on sketchyday.com on that YouTube channel. Um, and he's going a different route. He's going a route that's um, more expressive, uh, definitely more bespoke. Um, and I really like seeing his uh, way of doing it. It was funny when he started sketching over a picture of his own face as well, because that's obviously what I'm doing here as well. So to know that I'm on the right tracks, obviously I've learned a lot from Spencer over the years. I owe him a lot. So to see him sketching in the same way and sketching over his, his uh, picture of his face was, was really cool to see. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, is this your first step in the design process? Yes, yeah, so the first step actually was um, to read all of the information that Banton Frameworks had sent me. And what I mean by that was they have the augmented reality try-on uh, experience on their website and they have uh, really helpful blogs on their uh, website uh, that helped with the naming of... Um, all the pieces. So I know now that this section here is called the end piece. The arm is not actually called the arm. It's called the temple. We have the bridge. Um, you know, like the, that was really interesting to, to see all the different um, naming conventions that, that was used. So the research was quite um, good in that respect to, to get to know the glasses better. Um, Apart from that, obviously, like I said, I've been wearing glasses my whole life and that's almost the research stage has been my whole life. So when I got this email from Banton Frameworks saying, hey, do you want to design your own pair of glasses? It's like, of course, like I've been dreaming of this my whole life. Um, and I was pretty much ready to start sketching straight away because of that. If, if this was a new field that I didn't really know a lot about, um, then I would have needed to try as many glasses as I can. I would have looked at, you know, fashion blogs and, and tried to see all the different shapes. Why are some glasses like the way they are? Um, and, and I would have done a lot of that. But as it stands that I already have, I've already been living with glasses for my entire life. Um, so I was able to start sketching straight away. Uh, so like what, we're 15 minutes through the video of, a, of an hour's video and I'm still sketching and that probably goes to show just how much of the design process was taken up between sketching and then Illustrator and, and building the glasses out later on. And don't forget that whatever I show in this video is only about a quarter of all the effort that went into it on top of that. So look, the stuff that I didn't record were the later stages of each step, if that makes sense. So um, when I come to do the illustrator section coming up soon, I only recorded doing the vague outline. 
I didn't record the hours of finalizing the shape just because that would have been so boring to watch. Uh, but you get the gist of what happened in this video. So I'm just cleaning up some lines again, and I've gone for a straight bridge across the uh, across the nose here. And I actually kind of like this design. I almost bought this one forward to to take into Illustrator. I kind of liked the um, how it just flowed and and was quite. Um, geometric on the on the top there and after doing some of these sketches I've realized that designing glasses is really quite similar to um, typefaces and fonts in that when you I mean I, I watching the Helvetica documentary by Gary Huswit you realize just how much people can get into type and font uh, and the Hoffler um, Netflix abstract episode, I absolutely loved. But you realize that ske like sketching text and typefaces and fonts is all about not being geometrically perfect, but, but looking right to the eye. And I really found that with these glasses as well. Like there was, there's no... Um, perfect ellipse in these glasses but I was sketching and sketching over designs and you know there's no perfect geometry but it was it was all about what looks right to the eye and if you're having things in sketch in uh, typography like uh, serif fonts so serif fonts are like uh, Times New Roman that's a serif font that everybody knows uh, and the little tiny pieces on the end of each letter like if you think of a lowercase i you know it's got little feet that's a serif um and having those flowing sections i think quite well it works quite well in glasses as well so i was almost in some of these designs imagining them as a serif typeface which sounds like <laughs> that that sounds really pompous and really um, I don't know, like just thinking of a bigger meaning than what it actually was. But it's true. Some of these glasses, I thought, you know, the thicker section flows into the larger section and, and how does um, how does typography work in that way? So that was really cool. What I'm doing at this section at the moment, um, this was when I... I'll, I'll show you this little section of uh, the iPad screen recording, but I think you'll agree... If I showed the whole thing like this, my face is just way too much in it. So I'm pleased that I uh, caught the rest on camera and, and didn't have to rely on the iPad screen recording. Anyway, the idea was to have um, a slight hue of color, ever so slight hue of color in the designs so that I could say, oh, I quite like the red design, I quite like the blue design. And whenever you're doing research uh, like that, it's really easy for people to be swayed by color. So people fundamentally enjoy having, you know, people's favorite color can be green, they can be blue, people can hate red, like it's, it's so subjective. And um, I realized that after I'd colored the glasses just a little bit, even in my own head, I was like, oh, I don't really like those frames because they're green. Or, you know, like, I just decided to make them all gray so that there was no swaying of my judgment or the people that I showed their judgments. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I just showed that little bit in there because it's really difficult. I did a lot of user research at uh, my old company, Precipice Design. And uh, in that research, it, it was it's, it's always very tricky to not sway the um, process in any way like you have to let the participants lead the discussion uh, and you can't especially when you're interviewing non-designers and, and participants that aren't designers sometimes it's tricky for people to be able to separate color from the design
and it was the same for me as well. I, I looked at the red glasses and I thought I'd never wear red glasses. So I made them all gray and then imported my favorite one into Illustrator. And this is where I can start to clean up those lines. Um, how's it going, everyone joining in? In addition to designing the shape of the frame, have you also thought about designing some interesting texture patterns on the frame? So that's a really good question. And um, throughout this whole design process, I kind of had an inkling that I wanted to go for a tortoise shell frame, uh, just because I've had glasses in the past that have been tortoise shell and I've left for this pair. This pair is a, a clear pair that need a clean. And um, I just enjoy tortoise shell. So I thought, is it tortoise shell or turtle shell? I can never remember. Um, so I had an idea that I was going to have uh, that top sort of pattern in there. Uh, the way that the glasses manufacturing process works, from what I've seen on Banton Frameworks' website, is uh, once it gets machined, you know, it's, it's all polished to, to a really nice finish. And to add any texture, as in, like, uh, is it rippled or is it has it got dots in it or anything like that, I think would have been a big... Um, I, I don't think I would have enjoyed that as much. So for me, I designed these imagining that they were part of a, uh, a tortoise shell finish. Hey, <laughs> precipice design, shout out, yeah. Hello, whoever's watching from precipice. Uh, let me see, any advice for someone uh, going into their first year, uh, first year of design school? Uh, oh, is that, a, is that a question that I missed? Um, my first year at university, I took way too seriously. Um, I don't know if... I don't know if at other universities it works the same way. Uh, but at Brunel, where I went, um, the first year didn't count towards my degree qualification. None of the marks that I got in my first year counted. So, but I was still like trying to do my best to the mark scheme. Like I was trying to fit the mark scheme in, in the best way that I can. And uh, honestly, I don't know if that's the right way to do it. I, university is like a, a, an amazing place for you to fail. Um, if you're not failing, as in like if you try, as in not to fa like don't fail university, but each task that you do, if you don't fail in some way along the way, then you haven't pushed yourself to be as far as it can go, you know? University is one of the last places that you can fail and it doesn't affect anyone. Uh, like if, if, if I fail now in my job and that failure doesn't get picked up on until the product reaches market, then there's a lot of money at stake, obviously, but there's potentially... Uh, lives at stake if there's a health and safety hazard or um, you know in whatever field let's say you work in um, toys for children like the early learning center and there's a there's a product that get, gets out and um, you know you could hurt someone so everybody plays it safe in industry everybody plays it safe because it's not worth the risk to um to people's lives so at university you can really push the boat out and you can ask crazy questions and answer them with crazy designs uh, obviously it's worth passing like if you're at university pass it uh, but don't follow the mark scheme and don't chase the mark scheme is is my advice and just have fun with it know that it's a safe place to fail know that um it's one of the last places you can fail um, with no repercussions and just have fun. Um, yeah, that's, that's my advice. Yeah. Learning from mistakes. It's, um, that's the university is the place to do it. Uh, you mentioned about styles when designing glasses for someone else. How did you decide which frame will best suits with their style? I mean, how do you decide the overall shape of the frame? Uh, so I've never actually designed glasses for anyone else. Um, this is my first time designing glasses, but, uh, you can 
designed to fit a specific style by picking out designs that meet that style. That makes no sense. Uh, what do I mean? So like this this frame that we're looking at right now, I don't know why the mouse has stopped. Oh, I was just looking at the design while I was recording. So this frame has got what we call a keyhole bridge. So let me pause this for a little second and you can see the mouse, I think. So when the design comes up and back in on itself and then follows it round like this, I hope you can all see the mouse. Yep. Uh, that's what's called a keyhole bridge. And that was very reminiscent of mid-century modern. So like, you know, the, the 40s, 50s and 60s designs, this style became quite popular. So you can already pinpoint that um, the, the design is going for that kind of mid-century modern look. So it's telling us as people that uh, the design or the, the wearer is interested in um, design of that era, maybe minimal design. Um, it's quite formal. It's quite, um, you know, it, it's quite traditional. So you can pinpoint these elements of, of um, the lifestyle of the wearer just by having this little detail in here. Uh, the same would go if, uh, if these were huge frames and they had, you know, sparks on them, you know, or like the crazier designs, then you can tell that that person's quite outgoing and, you know, likes to make a statement. So it, de it really depends on who you're designing for and you can pinpoint the different elements like that. Um, obviously, without all the user research and without some of the user research projects that we had um, could last six months, a year, could cost half a million dollars, a million dollars to for a company to commission. Um, so me just sat here saying, oh, yeah, the keyhole means that they like mid-century modern. That's oversimplifying it. Um, but, you know, you can get the idea. Um, but that's how I would begin to design for others. Um, think about what they like, not only in terms of design, but also their lifestyle uh, and, and things like that as well. Uh, we've actually missed a point on here that I wanted to talk about. And I don't know if if I can scrub back. This, this section here. So after I've offset, I'm, I'm going to talk about this real quick and then we're going to go back to answering some questions. So I've offset the design. And uh, by this point, I'm just starting to, I'm not going to be able to find it, am I? There. Okay. So the, the tip to, to get Illustrator to flip the, the design. We're going to go over, we, we've selected everything that we want to flip. We're going to go over to Arrange. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to go to Transform in a minute. Transform. Sorry, Effect. <laughs> Distort and Transform. Reflect along the Y. Uh, reflect along the X. Oh, I've made a, a huge mess of this. I probably should have highlighted this in the video. You're going to go to Effect, uh, Distort and Transform. Then uh, it's here. Okay. We want to click Reflect along the X axis. And we want to choose where that x-axis is going to be. So we select it on this one here. So the leftmost point, right? But then that's just going to flip the thing and erase what was here. We want to say how many copies. And if you add the copies as one, then it keeps the original there as well. That is how, and I didn't say that in the original video, um, because there just wasn't enough time in an eight minute video. But there was enough time here. Uh, I've just taken us way back, so I'm going to go forward a little bit. I'm just going to... Um, after that, it's a whole lot of just changing the shape ever so slightly. I just wanted to point that out. Um, did you... Let me think. I think I've missed some questions. Did you do any uh, more broad pen and paper ideation prior going into Procreate or did you just come into it having a pretty good idea of what you wanted? Yeah, so I could have done some paper sketches. Uh, I, I saw that Spencer on uh, Sketcher Day did some um, some thumbnails and some paper and um, pen sketches, but I just jumped straight into Procreate because I kind of knew, um, I, I knew what I wanted out of a, uh, out of a pair of glasses. What is going to be really interesting, and it depends on how many 
creatives, Banton Frameworks has got to do this um, fun exercise. It's going to be really interesting to see how each designer has, has tackled the problem. And it's already interesting. Spencer's is the only other pair that I've seen as a work in progress. And it's already different because his pair is a pair of glasses, uh, sunglasses. Um, so the use case is already completely different. Um, so you can already tell that the use case of a product is is going to change the way that it's designed or change the way that it looks because of the use, use case is, uh, is different. So that's going to be really interesting to see everybody else's uh, process as well. Uh, more questions. One of my friends at uni got an ethics violation for putting a real baby in a product they made. Yeah, so that's really tricky. Um, design ethics, within, especially within design research and hiring participants to participate in um, design research, is um, you have to be so careful. Um, it's, it's a big issue. Uh, I mean, I hope your friend's okay. I hope the, the, I'm sure the baby was fine. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's so tricky to be able to navigate those, um, questions, those ethics questions. And especially at design university, like, like at Brunel, there was always a project that revolved around the elderly and always a project that revolved around babies and always a project that revolved around, um, types of people or, you know, people with a learning disability or, 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 or a, a moving impediment. Like, the, there's all these ethics that come along with that that you have to adhere to uh, and make sure that the participants are safe, make sure that they're not being led on or led to believe something that, you know, if you're prying and prodding for information to make your project better. It's really tricky, and, and, and that's not something that uh, gets taught enough, I think. Um, at Brunel, it was almost like being thrown in at the deep end and being like, you know, we have the the ethic, the code of ethics, adhere to it or don't do the project. Um, but there was never a do's and don'ts, or maybe there was. I don't know. I can't remember. But I I just wish that there was there's more revolving around uh, um, there's more education revolving around that type of thing. Uh, any good book recommendations that you have read as a designer? I actually I keep getting this question. I guess especially in a time like this when, when people are potentially at home more. Um, and I think maybe I'll do a video on it. I'm not a huge reader, as, as, as my girlfriend will, will let you know. Um, because I, I just like to look at the pictures. But there are some books that are very useful and I would not be here as a designer without them. And I think that's going to be a fun video that's not going to take a lot. Like with this Banton Frameworks video, uh, it's obviously taken me two months to do. And, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into it for an eight minute video. Um, but I think just going through some books and going through what's on my bookshelf and what I found really useful. Um, maybe I'll do this weekend or, or something like that and post it next week. So, yeah, uh, that's going to be a really fun little video to do. Um Hot key O to sketch pivot, then alt and shift. To sketch pivot and then alt and shift. Oh, is that to do the reflection thing, uh, Philippe? I mean, there are so many ways of doing everything in the Adobe suite. Um, there's always another faster way of doing it with hotkeys and, and all this, that, and the other. Um, so, yeah, I'll try that out next time. I've just caught a glimpse of my hair in the um in the in the small thumbnail on the stream. How's everybody's hair getting along? It's getting like I already didn't have a haircut for like a month before lockdown. And so now it's been like two months since I've had my hair cut. And for short hair, two months is a long time. So uh I'm uh, ap apologies for and especially when when these frames get delivered. And I'm going to do a little fashion photo shoot of me wearing them. I have no idea what I'm going to do with my, like, I need to make these glasses look as good as I can. And, 
I'm going to be an absolute scruff. So um, thank you all for for bearing for, for just bearing with me. Uh, how do you turn that into two point perspective? So these frames, I didn't actually uh, sketch these in in any perspective um, until. Well, I didn't sketch them in perspective at all. I sketched classes in perspective in the past, um, but from after this stage of of Illustrator, I bought them straight into um, uh, Shape of 3D on the iPad. So uh, I could have sketched them in in two point perspective, but um, yeah, just just took it from Illustrator into Shaper. I know that in one of, in the first video or the second video that Spencer did. I'm just going to keep saying on, on you know, Spencer on SketchDay.com. He sketched his in a two-point perspective. But the reason why I didn't do it for mine is just because the glasses are almost 2D anyway. Almost. I mean, without going into like, okay, how thick is the nose piece? How thick are the, the frames like this way? Apart from that, they're almost 2D when you don't really look at the the um, the uh, temples. Um, so I just didn't really see the need to. Sure, some glasses curve overall like this, but I didn't. I wasn't really going to gain a lot out of it. I don't think personally for me. Um, so yeah, I didn't sketch them in two point perspective. Where's my mask gone? I'm lost. I have no idea where my mask has gone. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's still lost. That's okay. I don't think we need it. The questions keep updating themselves. So, uh, another question. Uh, do you have any recommendations on which universities to go uh, as, an as an exchange in industrial design? I've only studied at one university. I've only studied in one country. I've only worked in one country. Um, the amount of respect that I have for my friends that came over from other countries to study in in London and in England is absolutely immense. Um, it, it you know I think pick a country that is going to work well for you. Pick a country that you want to learn in and, and live in, uh, and then you can use tools like the uh, like in the UK. There's like the Times higher education charts and they graph they like chart where each university stands in terms of like student satisfaction and um, things like that and when I started at Brunel Brunel was always at the top of, of those charts I don't know where it stands now um, but just look for the curriculum look for the like each university will post the curriculum that is taught for each year and you know broken down into maybe each uh, semester each term as well and find one that suits you and what you want to learn as a designer i didn't do that so much when i picked university i'll, I'll be honest i picked brunel mainly for the name mainly for the fact that it was in london there was a lot on the brunel curriculum that when i when it got to it i didn't agree with the curriculum and it was it was a big issue um, the, you know, we were still learning programs that were going out of date. We had to animate in Adobe Flash for one of our graphics projects. Uh, I don't even know if anyone's going to remember Adobe Flash anymore. Like, that's probably showing my age, but um, it was still being taught. And there was a big uproar from a lot of the students saying, you know, why are we wasting our times on these projects when they're not useful? Um that led to changes and led to course changes and so that, you know it's it's better now um uh, but if i'd have checked at the time of of choosing the university maybe maybe i wouldn't have gone but i am glad that i went um bruno had the placement scheme meant that i could go and work in industry for a year meant that i could get an internship off the back of that internship i got my job so without that uh i don't know how i don't know who i would be as a designer so i'm really pleased that i went but uh yeah try and check there we go. Try and check the uh, curriculum for any university that you think you might want to go to. 
Uh, what's on screen at the moment is I, I realized that I made the arms of the glasses, the, um, the temples of the glasses, but I didn't actually record the footage of it. So I decided to just remake them, uh, even though you can clearly see that I've already made them in, in the image underneath. So to do that, I used uh, just two squares and then um, the, the Pathfinder tool to, to uh, combine them. And then I used the, um, the, I always forget, what's the white arrow called? The black arrow selects everything, the white arrow selects the single point. Uh, I just use that, that white arrow to, um, to select the different points and push and pull. Um, and like I said, this was the sort of concept design that I had for the arm for the uh, temple but after speaking with um, Jamie and Lucy at, at Bantam Frameworks we, we decided just to go for their um, their own custom um, and uh, their own custom uh, temple that's the word I'm looking for to uh, to use in the design anyway so I designed all these pieces thinking that it was going to be you know thick and then thin around the ear and then thick again at the end but after all that, it, it, it just made more sense to use the uh, the Bantam Frameworks um, temple. I keep forgetting that word. So at the moment, um, you can see that I'm still playing around with the bridge. Um, and the bridge in this instance is quite thin in the middle. And this is where I'm talking about like the difference between glasses and, and type typography, uh, um, font design and, and typeface design. It's very thick and then gets very thin and, and that's what I was uh, ended up trying to design in the end. Hello to everyone just joining in as well. Just as a catch up for everyone else that's, that has just joined in within the last few minutes or last, how long have we been doing this? Half an hour or so. Uh, I'm showing the entire screen captured process that I've got for the Banton Frameworks glasses. Uh, it's not everything that I did. I recorded the first round of each stage. So the first round of Illustrator work, the first round of Procreate work, the first round of Shape of 3D work. Uh, there was probably about four times more work, four or five more times work that went into it uh, that I just didn't um, didn't capture because it was just going to be the same thing over and over again, but just iterating and, and refining. Um, but in this video, you can see the, the beginnings of each step. Um, and yeah, I just thought it'd be, be fun to hang out. So thank you to everyone that's just joined in. Don't forget if you have any questions, um, I've got the, the, the chat section up. I can see it. Um, so let me know if you've got any questions about the project, about the, uh, about Bantam Frameworks, about, um, my life as, as a designer, about anything that you like. Um, I'm currently in the video cutting out, uh, the first iteration or maybe the second, I think the second iteration of, uh, frames that I wanted to wear and try out. And, um. In the video that I posted, the original video uh, that's eight minutes long, this is all condensed into an eight minute long video that's on my channel. Um, it, it was just, I, I was so embarrassed to have to post, uh, yeah, having the coffee, yeah, well done. Uh, I was so embarrassed to, um, I was gonna cut all that out, and I think I did in the video. Uh, using these scissors, which were the only ones to hand at the time, uh, this was just as uh, shops started to shut and things like that. So it was like, well, I'll, I just need to get something cut out. I had the f the most flimsiest paper, the thinnest paper, the worst scissors, and um, I was quite embarrassed to show this. But it was it was also quite fun because it's obviously like having expensive tools and big cutting mats and and three D printers and and foam cutting element you know you don't need any of that to be good at design or model making or anything like that so I was actually quite happy that I could show that even for me as someone who is a professional designer I get paid to design uh, even I just you know use horrible tools to get things done as fast as possible um, 
even if it is really fiddly and frustrating to watch. Hmm. I've just realized that the... Um the chat has been on pause. I hope I'm still live. I'm going to tune in on uh, my phone to see if I'm still actually live. I hope I am. And if I can tune in and I can start to see some questions coming in. Here we go. I'm now watching the stream on my phone because uh, the screen that I had set up to um, to show the... Oh man, that showbiz baby. Things going wrong, and we're working to fix it. Okay, I think this is going to work. Okay, we're going to answer some questions. Um, oh yeah, the last. Okay, so the last time I saw the questions, I was asking about everybody's hair. Yeah, a man, but I don't. Th well. Depends on how long we're in here for, but maybe I'll maybe I'll end up with a man bun. I don't know. Uh, is Shaper an app or a software? So Shaper three D on the iPad is um, it's an app that uses um, push and pull techniques to create three uh, D forms, and you can export in um, like OBJ and and Step and and all those good formats. Uh, so it's a modeling software for the iPad. Uh, I find it quite powerful to be able to design on the go. It has some features missing that I uh, miss from SolidWorks. Um, but, oh, yeah, this section here. So this, I'll just jump in a little bit. So this is what you, like the, the top design is what I was showing myself cut out in the video and wearing. The bottom design is the final design that I sent to uh, Banton Frameworks. So uh, if I just scrub through, that's the difficulties of, of uh, having an hour long video. If you scrub through a little bit, it goes through a whole whole lot. So you'll see that I, um, the differences was I decreased the length of the bridge, the, the width of the bridge, and I also made the bridge a little bit thicker as well. Now the reason is because like we were saying about um, fonts and, and, and sans, uh, san, uh, serif fonts, and when the animation comes through in a minute, you can see. I wanted to have this idea that the, the lens was, that the frame was flowing around itself, if that makes sense. So it's almost like it's starting up here and then, you know, a thick and thin design. So it's really thin around the outside and then this nice central section here. Uh, and it looks as if the frame is, is kind of doing a loop on itself. Um, that's the, the style that I was going for and uh, just wanted to have that little illustration there to, to, to make that point. Joshua Jones, is it, something tells me that you go to Loughborough Uni. Is, uh, is that true? Deceiving Designs Holland, perhaps. I forgot what I was talking about at that point. I'm sorry. My brain is like a sieve. Um, the, the funny thing about like there's in the UK, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, but in the UK, there's a, while you're at university, there's a huge sense of um, rivalry between schools, between universities. But when you graduate, guess what? We all work together. The, you know, all companies hire all graduates from all schools. So... We're all friends here, uh, but it is fun to just carry on uh, with the rivalry just a little bit. Um, can you do a video uh, of light and shadow of a product? It can be a good video. Okay, so is that like for sketching? To like know where to put the highlight and the shadow? I used to do a lot of um, sketching tutorials on this channel. I haven't really done that in a very long time. And um, 
I don't know why that is. Uh, I don't know. One of my most popular videos by a long shot, as in like 10 times more views than any other video that I've ever done, is a video that I made how, on how to use Sketchbook Pro, which is a sketching app on the iPad. And I don't even use that app anymore, really. I, I use Procreate most of the time now. So the fact that people are on there, and I'm talking like 300, 400,000 views, like it's insane how many views this video has got, considering I don't use the program anymore. And people ask me questions on there in the comments, and I just, I don't know what to answer because the app has changed. Like it's had so many updates and so many changes since I made that video. In fact, I don't think a lot of the, like, then you press this button, then you do this, and, you know, this button pops up when you press it here. I don't even know if that's the same way anymore, and if the video makes sense while using the most updated version of the app. Anyway, that's a long way of saying, I used to do sketching videos like that all the time. Um, I've stopped doing them, but, yeah, maybe I'll I'll pick them up again. Um, the, the, I think the reason why I stopped is because... I can get by at sketching and I sketch a lot on the iPad and, and you know, I can do all that. Um, but there are people out there that can sketch better than me and there are people out there that can teach sketching better than me, uh, which is how I learned. So maybe a better video that would help more people is if I did a, uh, like, some, like found all the videos that I learned from and pointed people in that direction. Um, and all the channels that I learned from and all the, you know, all the tutorials. Because maybe that would be an easier way for people to learn. Rather than me trying to get better at sketching tutorials. I can um, just point people in those directions. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, it's, it's a good idea for a video. Um... Oh, you just got here. What is... Um, so, okay. So, the premise of the video for anyone who's just got here, I have designed a bespoke pair of custom glasses for Banton Frameworks. And they are based in Scotland. They hand make all of their frames. And they're going to make the frames that I designed and send me the finished pair for me to wear. So, in my last video that I posted on the channel... Uh, was an eight minute summary video of the entire design process. And this video is, I'm just showing the whole footage that I got from start to finish. Uh, and that's about an hour of footage. So eventually these glasses are going to get made and sent to me. Uh, how do you find taking a model straight from Shaper 3D into Keyshot? Does it work well? Uh, and can you run Keyshot on a, a MacBook Pro? Uh, so first things, uh, yep, Keyshot works on a MacBook. Works uh, no problems at all. Uh, I have a MacBook. I, I use a MacBook when I design. And um, Shaper works really well. Uh, you can export in multiple different formats. As with any exporting program, sometimes there are glitches in the exporting of the file. Uh, and the way to get around that Specifically, if you've got really intricate um, pattern parts or really intricate details, sometimes if you export, that can go slightly wrong and you end up with some missing faces or, or stuff like that in Keyshot. The way around that is you can export in different formats. So normally I like to export in OBJ. That seems quite stable. You can export in Step and, and, and all those uh, good good um, formats as well. Uh, but yeah... The, implementing both uh, works really well i have found that like the the frames that i had here i just import i from illustrator where we were before to um shaper you can export from illustrator as a dxf file or dwg file and you can import to shaper using those files and you can import those sketches Sometimes I find that those sketches glitch a little bit. And, I, and again, I don't know if that's an issue with Adobe. I don't know if that's an issue with Shaper. I don't know if there's anything in between or if it's just a format, like export one thing and import something else. Sometimes um, a perfectly round radius 
in Illustrator will import and the, the lines aren't quite tangent in uh, Shaper. So it's just something to bear in mind. Um, but apart from that, and that's quite rare, but it does happen from time to time. Apart from that, the, it's, it's quite good, quite easy to move from program to program. Uh, is there something you would want to achieve as a designer, like the if design or red dot design award? Um, yeah, I think awards are a tricky subject for a designer. Personally, I believe that design awards are not as prestigious as the awards tell you they are. So the awards are always out there saying, you know, we're the most prestigious awards, especially... Like, don't get me wrong, I would love to win a Red Dot or an IF Design Award. It's great to put on packaging, it's great to market, and it's great to tell people on the street, in shops, that you've won an award for the design. No question about it, it'll probably sell more designs because of that. But the fact that you need to pay to enter the IF Design Award... You need to pay to enter the Red Dot Design Award. You need to pay to collect the design. You need to pay to accept the design. And you realize that actually design awards are just whoever has the most budget to, to, to pay for the award. That's how I see them. They're great for marketing and they're great for, you know, maybe in a portfolio, you can say I worked in a team that won an award but it's not necessarily something that um, I strive towards. Uh, but absolutely, if you are offering, yes, I would like one of those awards, please. Hi, Sam, could you please tell us uh, once again the tool and mirror effects in Illustrator? Oh, what was the hotkey? So, so the way that I do it is select what you want, then go to select what you want to mirror. And don't forget, this stream will be live this stream will be available on YouTube to watch and come back to at a later date. Well, as soon as this video finishes. And I think we're coming to the end of the video anyway. So you select everything you want. You go to Effect, uh, Distort and Transform. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Then go to Reflect. Select the uh, axis that you want to reflect. Select where you want the axis to be. Add how many copies and then press OK. Uh, there is also in the chat somewhere the, the hotkeys to, to do that. I think it's O and then Shift and something else. Uh, but yeah, don't forget, this stream will be available after after this finishes as well. Uh, which program did you study? So I studied... So this is another issue that each design school is going to call their design course something completely different and it's going to change from school to school. I studied Industrial Design and Technology which is the Bachelor of Arts version at Brunel. Brunel also teach a Bachelor of Engineering and a Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering as well. So I was on the arts side, which was supposed to focus more on usability and human-centered design and emotions and things like that. And the Bachelor of Engineering is all about how things get done and does it work, yes or no, the user's not as important. Uh, as it turns out, Brunel... The only differentiating factor of both of those courses was one module in final year. That's how close the courses were taught. Like I was in the lectures with everybody else and it just comes down to one module at the end of it. So again, look at the MacBook setup and Roz has got her work set up as well. So we've turned our living room into an office. Uh, PC specs, would you recommend for using Keyshot? Um, there's, the only thing that PC specs are going to help with Keyshot is the speed. Uh, you can run Keyshot using the bare minimum and it's going to run okay if you want to set up some simple scenes with some nice lighting. Um, the PC specs don't make a better render. Um, they just make the render faster. Uh, and this is it. Here we go. The final design in, a, in an animation I'm hating Keyshot. Um, so yeah... I might actually, I've got an idea to make a video where I um, I try and show you how to render things on a computer that's not very fast uh, and how to get good results. So based on what people have said and, and the questions that I normally get, I think that might be quite a fun video to do. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I run Keyshot on a on a MacBook, which is renowned for not being as powerful as a Windows in terms of rendering, but I I still manage to get some good results. Um, oh yeah, Martin, the the um, paying for an award. Yeah, most of the time the client or the company that you work for is paying for the award, but as a as a designer, as an individual or a student. You're going to need to find the, the, the design awards that aren't paid for um, because they get expensive. I'm talking, well, I don't even want to start saying the prices. They, they get really expensive. Uh, so there we go, uh, folks. Let me see why uh, I want to start changing... I've lost access to move my webcam around. But that's okay. Oh no, we're back. Okay, here we go. So I can move me back. Just to start rounding this off, we don't need to look at um, the designs while it's there. So I can see everyone's questions again on my... Um, on my second screen. So just before I go, I mean, I'm here to answer any more questions you might have. Don't forget, um, this stream is going to be remaining on YouTube. So if you ever want to come back and see, oh, how did Sam do this in Procreate? Or how did Sam do this in Illustrator or Shaper or Keyshot? You can come and check it out. But I'm here for anyone, if you want to start asking questions now. Or I can let everybody go back to their days, their evenings, their mornings, wherever you might be. Because this has been really fun. I've really enjoyed um, uh, this stream. I've really enjoyed hanging out. Um, <laughs> Android or Apple? Uh, to each their own. Personally, I use a lot of Apple products, but I can see the appeal of people using Android and PC. And I was almost torn between getting a PC for my next laptop. I, I bought a new laptop around Christmas time, and I was almost torn to go for a PC. Uh, I went for a MacBook again, just because everything I've got works together with it, and it's it's what I know. Um... But yeah, that's that's why I go for Apple, just because it's, it's what I know. I know how to use the programs. I know how to use the shortcuts. That's that's just me. Uh, any tips for student applying for placements? It's a difficult time for placements. Yeah, like I'm, my heart goes out to you. Um, I can give as much advice as I possibly can, which, excuse me, which is um, just keep trying. Don't be disheartened by um, emails that mean you don't have the job. I went through so many job applications before I landed an internship. Uh, it, it seems like I imagine people watching and when they hear me say, oh, I went to uni and I got an internship and then I got a job out of it. And, you know, that almost makes it sound easy when it's it, I know it's not easy. Um, but um, don't be disheartened by rejection emails use them as a learning experience. I applied to hundreds of jobs, only got into only got interviews at, at two or three and only got a job at one. So you only need to, you know, you, you don't need a job offer from every single job you apply to. It's only one. So apply to as many as you can and don't take it to heart if, if you don't get it. it, it it's, you know, it's, it's not a reflection of you. Don't forget that you're not the only one being reviewed you are also reviewing that company and as soon as you have that mindset of i'm reviewing that company to see if i want to spend my time there then the the level the playing field is leveled a little bit so the pressure isn't just on you to do well in the interview that's the way that i see it um is it really worth buying an ipad or a wacom it depends on your workflow and the workflow that you want to have as a designer, for me, it was worth it. For me and, and my process, it was worth it. 
but you can be a designer. Like I tried to prove with the scissors the, w earlier in this video, with the awful scissors and the, and the thin paper, you can be a designer with paper and pens and scissors. Like you don't need all the fancy, all the fancy stuff to get it done. Um, what do you think is about hand drawing versus digital drawings? Which one is more convenient? I always sketch um, by hand on physical paper to get ideas out as fast as possible. No question about it, that is the fastest way to do it. On a post-it note, on scrap paper, on, on big A3, or, you know, on A3 boards or big sheets of paper, sketching thumbnails with a pen and paper is the fastest way to do it. I would never personally show a non-designer those sketches because they're so fast, um, but it's the fastest way. Sketching a more f high fidelity design and sketching something that you could potentially, or for me, I could potentially put in uh, a presentation. The the iPad is more convenient, but it you know, you don't need it. You, I cannot stress that enough. The iPad is not going to make you a good sketcher, in the same way that pen and paper doesn't make you a good sketcher. You still have to put the work in. It's just a different tool. Uh, since precipice, are you working for someone else now or making your own way? Uh, currently. I'm doing some of my own stuff, as apparent by this video. Uh, but I, I'm actually working at uh, Layer Design. Um, I started about two months ago, two or three months ago. So I wasn't there long before we had to start working from home. So I'm still settling in, and I'll, I'll be settling in for a long time. Um, so uh, yeah, th that's where I am at the moment. I'm still trying to do my own thing as much as I can. Um, so this... The, the only way that I can do my own thing is because of you folks. So it really helps you tuning in and it really helps if you like or share a video. Sharing a video is the best way you can possibly help because we've got, what, 32 people watching. If everybody watching shares this with a friend, then that becomes 64 people watching. Quick math. Um, so you folks help so much. So thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, I, I'm going to try and do as much stuff as I can in my own spare time. This this Banton Frameworks glasses is a, is a good example of the type of things that I want to do more of in the future. So if you haven't seen the eight minute video of, of the summary of, of everything that I did, go and check that out. Uh, do you recommend any design books? Again, uh, I get that question a lot. So I think I'm going to do a, a full video dedicated on that. Every designer should have a good kettle. Yeah. Oh, you can see the kettle. Which way do I need to lean to see it? There. <laughs> I've got actually two. Like one is just the normal tea kettle, and the other is my coffee pot. In the background there, product placement. I think Tom Dixon owes me a thousand pounds now for that product placement. Um. Yeah. It'd be great. Banton shows that. Oh yeah, for for anyone else that doesn't know, the the next video in this series is going to be Banton Frameworks showing how they hand make the frames up in Scotland. They are they haven't done a lot of videos before, um, but they are going to try and get their vlog on. They're going to try and vlog the process as much as they can, and and I'm going to cut it together. So the next video for this series is going to be hand making the the, the lenses and the frames, not the lenses. Hand making the frames, putting it all together, and uh, the unboxing experience for me. So this this series, I'm so excited, is is literally going to be from start to finish, the entire design and manufacturing process. So I really can't uh, wait for that to start happening. Um, thanks for the answer, Sam. What might be changed after the virus? In, uh, because of the virus now. Uh, yeah, I I don't know what's going to happen after all this. I really don't know. Um, I think people are going to be more comfortable in working from home and companies are going to be more open for people to work more flexible hours, I hope. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We're all in this together. Uh, love the key shot videos. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, State of Industrial Designers on YouTube. Uh, it's been picking up. So Industrial Designers on YouTube is a new thing that is only just starting to really happen. There are so many graphic designers, so many design visualizers, so many um, animators and, and typography uh, and, and handwritten designers on, on YouTube. 
industrial designers are not really here. Um, I can think of, uh, Jimmy. Does, like, I, I can think of a few that 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 are out there. Um, but especially as as someone who um, who's trying to show the the whole process, then um, I've lost my feet again. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really exciting time to um, for for a designer to uh, to to be on in uh, to be on YouTube. And it's a great community that is growing. Um, and I cannot thank the community enough for that. Uh, more designers are joining every day. That's amazing. Um, hello, this is what I see when I... Um, this is behind the scenes. I'm just going to put me down there. Oh, of course. I forgot that I've made my, my whole face full screen. Uh, I'm having issues with the questions again. So let me just see. Okay, one or two more questions. Uh, and then I'll let you all uh, have a good day. Um, uh, recommend. Oh yeah, thank you so much for recommending the videos. I, I cannot thank you enough for that. If you know, even if, even if one person shares, you know, if you share it with one of your friends and then they share it with one of their friends, um, if if that keeps happening for a long time, then potentially, I could do this full time, which would be amazing. Um, I can't at the moment because each video that I make, I make about one dollar for, and I can't live off one dollar per video. Um, but I do it because I enjoy it. I do it because I want to help. That's that's why I do it. Uh, okay, one more question. Fusion 360. Uh, okay, Fusion 360. I do use sometimes. I'll, I'll use because that works on MacBook as well as Windows. Um, I, I have been learning that more and more recently. But once you know one modeling software, you can transfer that knowledge to other modeling softwares. And, and uh, the fact that I know SolidWorks, the fact that I know a tiny, tiny amount of Blender, the fact that I know um, Shaper 3D means that I can pick up uh, so, um, Fusion 360 relatively easily. Um, so yeah, I do use that as well. The reason why I don't use SolidWorks so much is because it's so expensive. SolidWorks is not for the faint of hearted in terms of price. Um, let's see, uh, as a freshman industrial design student, wanted to go to college, uh, what should I do to prepare for school and cope with industrial design itself? Um, yeah, don't worry about needing to know everything before you go to university or college. That's where you learn the things. I, I will tell you now, the fact that you're on this video, viewing this video, means that you are already in a better position than a lot of people starting. Um, design school is, or at least the first year of design school, exists to make sure everybody is at the same level of knowledge so that you can go off and do your own thing in the second and third year. Um, so the fact that you're here watching this video and already interested in design and, and taking part means that you're, you're doing good. You're doing okay. Um, just keep keep at it, keep passionate, keep practicing. Uh, you don't have to know everything before going to school. Uh, okay, I think the stream's frozen. I don't know if we're still online or not. Um, but because it looks like it's frozen on every device I've got, uh, I'm going to say, oh no, I think we're still live. Uh, but I'm gonna say, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been so fun to hang out. Um, this video is staying live on YouTube and we can hang out. I mean, we've had some technical difficulties. I'm still learning how to use YouTube. I'm still learning how to go live. I've got everything that I can hooked up to try and make this easier. Um, but some of those things are frozen as we go along, but we've made it. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to share this video with anyone or share my channel or share anything with a friend if, if you want to if you want to help them out because that helps me out as well. Um, I can't wait for the next Banton Frameworks video when we get to see the hand making of the frames. I hope this has been really useful in terms of the, the process that I used. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try and do more of these live streams. I also have a live stream planned uh, on Sunday at, I think, 6 p.m. UK time, 
where we are continuing the uh, camera sketching that I started in the last live stream. So tune into that if you want to uh, hang out there again as well. As always, if you liked anything in this video, let me know in the comments when they appear, when this video goes live. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.